Hi, my name's Benny Knopp from Noisy Post. Today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. It's an unboxing video. Now, normally I don't do these, mostly because I don't get my hands on equipment before other people, but Blackmagic have been kind enough to send me a little package and we're gonna open it today. Recently, I had a conversation with a team member at Blackmagic and I expressed my interest in Fairlight. And I told them that it could be a great contender compared to say Pro Tools. And with some more minor changes, I really think this could be a great door for professionals to use. And in that conversation, they basically said, we'll send you some equipment. We'd love you to test it out and see what you think. So I got a package today. Look at this boost. This is the Fairlight desktop console. Basically, it's got what, 12 faders, really simple, transport control, all the buttons you need. The good thing is as well, this thing connects up to a monitor and basically gives you a channel overview. Let's pull this out, so what do we got? In the box we have software installer, bits and pieces, whatever. That's not really the important thing, is it? We just want to get the good stuff. Look at that. So we have ourselves a power cable, the beast. What have we got here? So that's a USB-C to USB-C, which you get in the box. Let's see what else we got. Ooh. So this is obviously a template, so you can cut the shape out of your desk. Because the good thing with this is, see it's got little edges. So this could just slide straight into a desk. That would be really nice. But my desk, I friggin' love, and there's probably not a chance that I'll be cutting that anytime soon. So let's just look at this. So as I said, you got power cable, we got a USB-C cable, we got some beautiful um, LCD monitors here. Let me just line you up. So just initial look, the faders feel pretty nice. Yeah. There's not much of a nice click to these buttons. Oh, they're nice. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so there's click where it matters, right? So your transport, it's got some nice click to it. These buttons, they're a bit soft, but they feel quite nice. But I love that click of the transport there. The jog wheel, not a lot of resistance compared to like, so I use the Artist Mix stuff. I've had the Artist Mix stuff for a while for Pro Tools. That feels all right. Like it, it's a nice rubbery outside. Feels good. I just wouldn't mind a little bit more resistance. I like that zoom button there. That'd be good. And I'm assuming we can use shift. So we've got the unit. Got a diagram for cutting out the hole in your desk. Power cable, USB-C, downloads and such for the software. That's it. So let's move it into the studio and plug it in. We're now in my 5.1 mixing room here at Noisy Post. And I've set up the console right here in front of me and I've got a down view for you to see on the mixer, and I'm also screen capturing what's coming out of the HDMI here as well as what's on my screen. So I'm gonna take you through all the different steps that I have just discovered myself, but also from reading the manual, which Blackmagic kindly told me where to find it. Now, um, the paperwork wasn't that clear, and basically I had to get them to tell me to look up the application folder. So if we go to DaVinci Resolve within your applications folder, uh, there is a few things that you need to know. So we've got Fairlight Studio Utility, which isn't so important for this console. I think this is better for when you have the larger consoles and you need to add all the different units that you have. But you will need to use the control panel setup you basically need to make sure that it's connected. So you can see on the screen that I've got it through the network and through USB. So I don't know if you can do it through just one or I've just got both. But if you click on this, it'll tell you what version you're on. If you don't have uh, Resolve open and you click identify this device, it'll light up some of the buttons. It says here that I'm net, um, connected to the network and you can obviously change the brightness of the screen. So that screen would also pop up a firmware update if you needed to, but I didn't. So you need to make sure that that's coming through, that it's connected. One thing you should definitely read is the new features guide. It basically gives you a full rundown of the console, what all the buttons do, and there are layers to it as well, which is fantastic. 
There's lots of modifiers. And once you get to know them really well, this thing will help you fly around for sure. One thing you'll need to do once you've got Resolve started is we want to go to our preferences window and under control panels uh, under system, you just need to make sure that desktop console is selected there. And I've also clicked on always in jog. Basically that makes the jog wheel work at any moment. So when you click save, it may say you need to restart. So just close down DaVinci, reopen it and it will show up. I know I've said this before, but I would recommend reading the manual because I went over this on my own, just pressing some buttons, seeing what the things were doing and just having a bit of a play on a project. And it wasn't until I read the manual that a lot of it made so much more sense. There was a few things that were frustrating me that you couldn't do until I read the manual and then realized there were options within this console and it actually is pretty smart. The guys have thought about it really well. What I'm gonna show you is just the overview of each section of the console uh, and maybe a few little things that I picked up from the manual that I would say you dive deeper into and read and reread so you, you nail it. So what we've got here on the left side is your control functions. So basically we can click on the master and you'll notice on the HDMI display for the console that things change depending on what you're pressing. We have our master section here, so that's your buses. So you can obviously change the level uh, of your bus. Uh, you can see it, all the details, but the thing with the bus at the moment, all I've got is a stereo send going out to a bus. But in the biggest scenario is we would have all our different stems set up there. So you would see your dialogue stem, your effects stem, your music stem, uh, and your you know master stems as well as your mix downs. So they'll all be there. You've also got a monitoring section over here. So you'll be able to just solo some of those stems. But anyway, so we've got the master. We've also got a channel view. So this channel view gives you a great overview of each channel. Uh, and then you have pans. Obviously the pan is specific to the channel that you've got selected and it dives deeper than just left, right. If you're in surround, you can go front, back, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we've got plugin. Now, one thing I, I read is that if you have multiple plugins, so these are like your own inserts, you know, third party inserts, if you press the plugin button and then you can press the number associated, you can go through and pick your different plugins. So you've got the user defined keys here. So if you press two, it'll go to the second plugin, three, four, five, six, it'll go through all your different ones there. You got EQ here. So this is obviously the uh, EQ that's within Fairlight. Uh, we've got your expander and gate, compression, limiter. Now your um, input is obviously for your recording. So if you want to select a microphone coming in from your audio interface, you can also change the levels and the trim on that as well as it comes in. Sends are uh, obviously going to be your reverbs uh, and delays, things like that. So that's the control section on the side here. Now we've got user keys here. Now, at first they were doing some really wacky things and it was uh, kind of frustrating me because obviously I, I didn't read the manual. So I don't, yeah, tip is read the manual. <laughs> On the side here, we have some user functions. Now these change depending on what you want to do. So you've got an editing one, you've got a mixing one, recording one. To bring that up, you press the zoom button and one or any of the numbers and it will bring it up here. So to go to the top level, we press alt and then you can see here. So we've got basic, we've got level, nudge, clip, all that sort of stuff. So what we want to do is we select the track that we want to fix and we go, all right, so we want to go alt, we're going to go to level, and we want to go clip level. So we press and hold one and we can look at that. Basically that's clip gain, right? We could fade it in at playhead. So that's got some cool functions there. Um, and then if we want to, so that to go back to the top level, you go alt. So we're still in the edit window. You can see also the edit user buttons. So we can go to nudge, we can nudge it left and right. So you could just, you know, nudge it like that. Uh, but if we go control alt, it takes it to the user sets. So there's edit, mix, record, uh, what have we got? Views and setup. So if we press two, now we can go to the top level of the mix. We can go to like punch. So this has got uh, automation buttons. So you got like, you know, punch in or we can go to, um, what have we got? Uh, preview. So we can put ourselves into preview mode. So whatever we do, doesn't actually happen automation wise, but then we can print it later. There's some really cool buttons there. Like it will take a bit of time to get used to it, but honestly, once you get, once you get really quick with that, 
that'll be a fantastic feature. So that's your user buttons and eventually it's gonna be customizable. So you'll be able to set this up perfect for your workflows. You got your nudge here, which is just moving your playhead forward and back a frame. If you press shift, it goes forward and back a second rather than just a frame. Uh, so that's helpful if you want to like be quite precise about your movements. Shift, Alt, Control, and Undo. They're pretty simple. If you've got, if you undo something, you can press Control to redo it. There's some stuff like with your faders. If you got it, move it down. Like if you move it down, you want it to go back to where it was. You can press Control and it goes back to zeros out. With our rotary knobs, they feel great. They move really quick, so you can kind of do a nice, you know, left to right really fast. If you press Control and then just tap it, it'll go back to the center goes back to like its default state. Same with the faders, if you've got it down and you want to go back to zero, just press control. If you hold shift, it, you can go in smaller increments. So, you know, when you move it here, it kind of goes in three, you know, numbers at a time. If you hold that, you can fine tune it. So you hold shift. That's similar for other things as well. Like when we're scrolling on the jog wheel, if you press control, you know, it speeds that up, you know? So there's, you just got to find what things work with what. Now so we've got our selects here. So the select button obviously is the obvious thing. So once we're out of our control mode, you can just select. And what it'll do is it keeps adding on. So if you double press though, it'll undo the others. So if we've got everything selected and you just want to select this one channel, you just double press that really quick and it gets rid of the rest. If you have, obviously if I had multiple channels, it would be a lot easier. But if we hold down that button and we double press this one, it'll select that whole row. So if we had lots of faders and you wanted to select eight, hold down on one and double press the other and it will select everything in between. But you can also just, you know, quickly go through and select them as well. One thing to note that when you're in say like one of these modes, whether it's pan or channel mode and we've selected, so at the moment we're on cam audio, but you want to go to boom and you want to get your channel stripped to the boom. At the moment, all our select buttons enable and, and unenable certain functions so we need to hold this enable button and that will then turn our select button back into selecting the track. So now we've selected our cam audio over here. So this is a quick way to go and select different channels. So we're back out of channel mode, which is great. Under the select buttons, we've got solos, which is pretty straightforward. But if you hold control, press solo, it will unsolo all of those. If you press alt and then solo, it will solo safe a channel. So you could see the blue on the S there. That's good for like solo safing things like your reverbs or your stems so that when you solo a dialogue channel or whatever, they are all still open. Um, then we've also got our mutes underneath those. They're pretty straightforward. And then our delicious motorized faders. So they feel great. Later on, I'll give you a bit of an automation test to show you what they sound like through the mic. Next, we have automation. So over here, we've got automation on. That brings up your automation menu there. We've got stop, which does your on-stop event. So whether it's, you know, holding the automation or return, so it will return to back where it was. But I assume, I haven't tested that out yet, but it will still play. So if you're playing through your, your film or whatever it is, and you want the automation to go back where it was, but you want to keep listening, you press that. Uh, we've got our modes, which does our right or trim mode. We've got our touch latch buttons as well. So next is the enable button. If we press and hold that, we can click on anything on this desk, whether it's the fader or rotary knob for pans. If we press it, you can see it goes into enable mode on the um, automation tab. And if we click it again, it'll go off. So if we want to do some fader movements, we can click that to turn it on. So we're now wanting to... Uh, automate that fader. We're going to put automation mode and we're going to select that channel. So now you can see there's red. You can see the faders gone red as well. And if we play, I had a conversation with a team member at Blackmagic and I expressed. So we fade out, right? We stop that. Now, if we want to see that what we've done, we can press the curve button and then press the fader. And if you have a look, there we go. There's our automation. Next, we've got our monitoring section and a few extra controls here. So we can, you know, as I did before, if you hold automation, you can select what channels you want to put in automation mode or you can press record. We can select a track. If we've got an input, say a mic, that would put it in record mode uh, before I showed you what the enable does. Next, we have the two bank buttons. So that obviously banks the, the channels. So if we had more than 12 channels, that would bank across to the next 12. If we hold shift, it goes in single increments. I think if you hold control, it goes to the end 
or the front. Might have been alt, but you know, you'll work that out. Next, we have dim and mute, uh, which are pretty obvious. So if we've got something it's playing, something, I had a conversation with it. We can dim it down. We can mute our speakers. Fairlight. We can, can turn them down. One day it could be a contender. We can change our source, which source would be a stem. So if we had multiple buses and different stems, you can press source. Speakers is obviously if you had, say, a stereo pair and you wanted to monitor your down mix, then you can use that. Talkback is your talkback. If you have a talkback mic, it's great for things like ADR or if you're recording stuff, if you're going to use it as a recording setup. Cans are obviously your headphones. So you'd have to nominate what your outputs are for those. Uh, and all the buttons are the same. So if you hold cans, you can unmute, mute, and, and all that sort of stuff as well. We have our transport, which we've got our jog wheel. We've got shuttle. So if you hold that down, you can obviously speed it up, slow it down. Uh, as I said before, if you hold control, that kind of goes a bit faster with the jog. There's the zoom function, which helps us zoom our timeline. If we hold control, it zooms the tracks up and down. The other thing is your jog wheel speed is determined by how far you zoomed in or out. So if we zoom right in close, it's obviously fine. We zoom right out and it's a bit more coarse and you can hold control to go even further. You can see that our selection's changing with our playhead, but we can also hold shift and then zoom and we can change the selection as well. So we can select that track and we could trim the head using the user buttons. It's really great. The other thing you've got is this scroll button and the scroll button's great for just getting through your projects really quickly. So you can just, you know, scroll all the way around. We've got forward and reverse, stop and so play and record obviously. So they're all typical buttons. So you see the jog wheel will be fantastic for just getting through your project really quick. You'll be able to zoom in and out, you know, trim clips, all that kind of stuff with the user functions. One thing I want to show you is how loud these are. So. What I'm going to do is quickly write some automation. So we're going to turn this on. We're going to, okay, faders are already enabled. So we're going to select these. So we've now got those three into write mode. We're going to press play. I had a I'm going to mute that. And we're going to just move these around. Going to stop that, play it again. Can you hear that? I'm going to play it one more time for you. They're not the quietest, but they're not bad. I would say comparable to say the Artist Mix or I haven't used the new S1, so I don't know how good they sound, but the old Artist Mix were pretty loud, um, but it's not offensive and they move beautifully. So, and they feel great under your fingers. So no complaints there. So this has been my first unboxing video. I unbox something, I would say it was a success. What do you think? Either way, in the next month or so, I'll be working on projects using the desktop console and you'll get to see the pros and cons of this console. I think in about a month's time, maybe, maybe a couple of months time, I'll do a really in-depth review once I've actually given this thing a run for its money. But I uh, thank you for joining me and please like and subscribe and all the usual stuff and uh, you'll see more of me working in Fairlight doing audio post-production. So. My thing for this year is to see if it will replace Pro Tools. The console's feeling great. And for the price, I would say it's a good contender for say the Artist Mix series. Because the other thing is you got to remember, you get their software for free. For free? Where Pro Tools, if you want surround sound, it costs you thousands of dollars a year. Maybe not thousands, over a thousand. In Australia, it costs me thousands. Over a thousand. Either way, we're gonna have fun on this journey just testing it out. So join me. See you guys.